The greatest challenge as a business owner is to capture the imagination of the audience to spark curiosity is the number one goal. And that's what we're gonna talk about today from a former journalist who's gonna bring us some tips and tricks on how to write more engaging and interactive copy. So please welcome to Amplify Your Marketing Message, our guest today, Mr. Sean Bernstein. Super excited to have him. He is our chief storyteller. And Sean, I want to know what makes a great hook? What makes a great hook? I think you have to kind of take someone out of where they're sitting, where they're standing and put them right into that situation. I, you know, so many of my blogs, for example, start with the word imagine or start with the word, you know, remember, or you just kind of have to have someone buy into the image that you're putting forth and keep it as grounded enough to something that they can connect with that they go, okay, yep. Yeah. This makes sense to me. I love it. This is an interesting one because a lot of people jump right in to the storyline and people are like, what, what's happening? A great hook, I always say, is like the first page of a novel and you're going, I don't know what's happening. What's going on? Um, why, why are we here? What's happening? And this is a really important thing. And as a storyteller, Talk to us a little bit about what do you think makes a great story? What makes a great story is really one I think that you as a reader, as a listener, as a viewer can connect with. You know, we want to have, there's there's certain things in stories that we're just so used to loving. We love a, a hero's journey. We love when something good happens. We love when someone helps someone else. Uh, I think sometimes, you know, we love a, a villain that we can root against, but, you know, that doesn't come up as much in business. Uh, but I think that whole bit, you know, I'm all big about talking for entrepreneurs of how you help your clients, your customers, how you help other people. I think part of that goes back to that sort of love of the hero's journey in our, you know, stories and fairy tales that we want to see someone who can do good and help others uh, and in a way that they can help us. So I think there is some connection there. I do believe that, you know, business, especially in the service based industry, which you and I are both part of. People do business with people and stories are the magic that connects us. And so often, I think if you've taken the leap into the world of business and you've maybe come through the path of I'm an entre entrepreneur, but accidental in many cases, we hesitate to, to share stories because we think, well, we need to be this professional and we come with the um, very scripted, very generic. Uh, we all sound the same world. And my personal opinion on that is it's a recipe for disaster. So I want to talk to you a little bit about your company and the right stuff, because you work with story day in, day out. And tell me about the evolution of do people hesitate when you say, tell the story you don't want to say, or how do you work through finding courage to use story to spark that curiosity, because that's really what creates compelling copy, compelling hooks, compelling story that gets people to move. And ultimately moving is the goal of whatever piece of content you're putting out there. You want them to take an action. Talk to us a little bit about that. Sure. Well, you know, you made a great point. And, you know, a point that I've been up with clients is that business, we, we, we put businesses in these buckets of, you know, B2B, business to business or business to consumer, a B2C. And it's not. It's human to human. We connect with each other on a human level. And really, the reality of a crowded marketplace is almost no matter what you do, you know, whether I'm a writer, you as a coach, any sort of service based, any product based, we're not the only ones out there. We don't have a complete monopoly on, you know, there's folks that are monopolies, but we don't have a complete monopoly on the market that we're in. We are usually playing in a crowded field, whether it's, you know, an online sphere or a big city. So what is it that sets us apart? And really, at the end of the day, one of the only unique things about us that is truly unique about our businesses is our story, is mm -hmm. who we are, is the person behind it, is how we started, why we started why we're still doing what we do usually to help others and why we like helping others, how we help others, uh, what keeps us motivated, what keeps us engaged. There's so much there and it's hard peeling back some of those layers with people. You know, we're, we're taught, I think, two really big uh, misconceptions about the world. We're taught to have this, you know, 
deep sense of modesty that it's you know improper to mm -hmm. talk about yourself or talk about your accomplishments and i think you can do so while still retaining some humility you don't have to sort of boast about how you if you just scream from the rooftops that you're the best and you're the biggest and using all the superlatives no one cares people <laughs> don't want that i don't think that goes very far. and there's still folks who do that as their marketing but i don't think that goes very far in you know a cynical world uh, but I think really sort of telling those stories of who we are and how we help others. Um, and, you know, the other piece that comes to mind, because I come from a world where, you know, we're very protective of privacy from the legal, my legal background, very protective of privacy and client entity, and that's fine. I think you can tell broad stories and you can, you know, make them a little bit apocryphal and, and sort of tell stories in broad strokes. You don't have to give identifying details of, you know, a certain individual Mm -hmm. um, especially if it's something that's uncomfortable or a little bit compromising, uh, you can sort of, you know, use those broad painting strokes to tell a story that's not going to be identifiable, but still really illustrates how you can help someone. That's true in so many different mm -hmm. spheres. There was something you said there that really interested me because it is absolutely the number one thing that I think has good intentions and falls short of maybe your desired result. And that is the use of superlatives. Because I often see like, I'm the only one, or I'm the best at. And I know early in my own career, when I was working on creating a course, one of the biggest uh, lessons I learned was actually a legal one. And it was, you know, you have to be sure that whatever statements you make are defendable. And it was one of the best things I took away from the course, honestly, beyond the fact that, wow, I really need to do my own marketing because I'm really great at helping marketing someone else's business. But could I apply it to myself? And this is the one where, where I, I think is interesting because the moment someone says, I'm the best or I'm the only, I'm the only one in the world who does this. Well, how do I know that? And a trust breaks happens. And the moment a trust breaks happen, we start to go, well, I don't know if that's true. And if I don't know if that's true, mm -hmm. what else are you telling me that maybe isn't also true? And so here for our audience, I want to say caution here. You can be great at something, but be careful being the exceptional one and the only one elite in your class, because I think it could be dangerous. Would you agree with that? If you've seen clients okay. use that and go, ooh, let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah, and it, it makes me cringe. You know, I come from a very conservative legal world. I mean, lawyers here in Ontario couldn't even advertise, I think, until the 90s. So, mm. or, you know, uh, there's still a lot of caution. And you see folks out there who have that, you know, sort of braggadocio, uh, you know, bent to their marketing. I, I cringe personally. Mm. I was always taught, you know, in sales, there's an old axiom that facts tell and stories sell. Mm. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, you know, you, you're, you're probably not the only, and to be honest, you're probably not the best. Let your clients be the voice that you're the best. Let them be the ones to spread the word. Tell people you're the best by showing them how you help them and showing, you know, how you've helped others in the past, how you can help folks like them and let them discover for themselves that you're the best, that they want to declare you as such. That's okay. If someone, I, I will never tell you that I'm the best writer. I think I'm good. My clients think I'm great and I'm grateful for it. Uh, but I will never tell you that I'm the best out there or the only writer out there. That is both of those, I think, are patently untrue mm -hmm. and, you know, it would be silly to hang my hat on. So instead, I'd yeah. much rather, you know, show you what I've done. Uh, you can look at testimonials and see, you know, the experience that other clients have had. And if you think it's a right fit for you, great. I would love to show you why I'm darn good at what I do. And if it's not a right fit, that's okay too. Uh, but let's, you know, learn by having a really satisfied client example versus me just sort of playing carnival barker in your face because no one wants that. Nobody wants it. So please stop doing it. If you're an audience member, please audit this and make this immediate change in your business because you will start to feel better in integrity and your audience will start to say, I'm continuing to move towards you, which is all of our goals. I want to talk because there's also something you just said there that I think is phenomenal and it's really an important one. And it comes down to social proof and saying, you know, it's really important that you don't be the amplifier necessarily every day of the week. It's okay to own in your own awesomeness, but using social proof and using the stories of your client examples. And if you're just starting out in business, you should be your own best example. 
However, as your business grows and evolves, you do work with other people. Sometimes that's a peer to peer capacity. Sometimes that is in a paid capacity, but using their voices and their stories, even if you don't, to your point of privacy, always get permission in writing that you can use their names to use the illustration of paint the picture. If the person moved in their journey from place A to place B, imagine your success if you did the same. That is very compelling. And it is something that you should be having an intentional strategy around. Because when you and I first met, I actually had come across a video promo piece that you had done where you were walking through an office and talking a little bit about yourself, your background, your story, and what it is that you do for clients. And you said that piece of story changed my business. Talk to us about why did you feel you needed a story like that, which happened to be video, and what it has really done to your business and what you now have learned about it that you will encourage your clients to consider in their own success path. Sure, I'd be happy to. It was a really neat experience. Uh, so I had sort of contemplated the idea before and I record, you know, little reels on my cell phone sort of thing. So my face is part of my business, it's out there. Uh, but I was friends with the production company and they had done a video explanation for a client of mine, actually. I had written the client's website and they did this piece that was much longer <clears throat> and more involved. And I said, you know what? I don't think I want that, but I think I want to walk and talk that really tells my story because my story and my background as a journalist, as a lawyer, et cetera, really frame my business and really frame the approach I take to my business. Uh, and something that I tell my clients that I was always taught is people have to know, like, and trust you. Mm -hmm. So they have to get to know you. Uh, they have to like you. you got to be, you know, be able to let people in a little bit. And once they build up that trust, a bond is formed and they're you know, willing to go with you. So how could I put that message out in a way that did that? And so I did a video that was you know, really a walk and talk and me sort of shedding the layers. I'm taking the suit off and the tie off and the shirt, um, you know, that I'm not the lawyer, you know, suit and tie guy anymore. And you know, I was a journalist in the button down, but that's not really me anymore either. Uh, and by the end, I'm in my branded right stuff T-shirt. Uh, talking about sort of the work that I do with my clients. Um, the video was wild. It went international, got about 50,000 hits on LinkedIn alone, plus other platforms as well. Uh, the company that produced it got a number of leads out of it because people, you know, in the area who knew both of us went to them and said, I want what you did for Sean. So I was thrilled to support them. I give them full credit for it. The really interesting thing, I think, and the thing that kind of kicked my butt a little bit, if I'm being honest, is how many people, and I'm talking friends and family, you know, warm market, uh, saw it, were very pleased for me and congratulated me on my new business. Here's the problem. It wasn't the new business. I was three years mm. in by that point. <laughs> and so it was, you know, and I, I could laugh it off and it's funny to me still, but it's really eye-opening that, you know, you think when you're devoting yourself to a profession, you're building a professional reputation and you're publishing and putting things out there, you think that everyone knows what you do and that you're still doing it. Um, and you think you can't be any clearer. You are, you know, being very public about your presence. And that's just not true. You know, people can always use a reminder and a clear explanation of what, who you are, what you do and how you can help. You know, so I can laugh off that they thought it was a new business, but it was a great reminder of, hey, and I, I joke with clients that half my social posts to just to remind people that I'm alive. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I'm being glib about it, but it, it's very true. Proof of life. I was here. Exactly. exactly. Still here, still working, still available. It's like an aging actor. Still available for work. Yeah, I'm old and you forget my credits, but, you know, I'm I'm here. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not old, but uh, I certainly got to remind people um, that I'm around, you know, and one of the best uh, pieces of feedback I'll throw in that I got from a client having coffee a couple months ago was... You know, and we've done a little bit of work together previously, so that was really interesting. But she said, I don't know, I like you, she said, I don't know how to use you. And that was really eye-opening, because here's someone who knows my work and likes what I do, but isn't really sure where I fit into her puzzle. And I could, you know, chop that up to her not understanding, but that's not true, that's on me. Mm -hmm. So you've got to make it really clear that, you know, they know, like, and trust you, and they know exactly what you do and how you can help. And the clearer you can be about that, be clearer still. Or as my wife says, louder for the people at the back. You know, <laughs> just her. keep 
going with it because it will move the needle. There's a lot of truth in what you say, and I, I, I resonate a lot with it because I said this story of the peeling back the layers was great visual branding. It was great visual story. It landed with your course, your brand, and in the t-shirt and the casual guy of saying, this is me. I'm, I'm the person you want to have a coffee with, which is important for the marketing, the branding that you wanted to client you wanted to attract. What is also really important in the story, because I have this conversation all the time, do people know what you do? You think you hear it and tell it a thousand times a day. You don't. In your head, you do. But you need to be more visible. You need to get clear. And I love the fact that you said I identified the gap because I think our audience has this gap. I know I have this gap. It's do people know your products and services by name? Do they know when they would need it? Why they would choose you? and what the next step is to have a conversation about it. Notice in all of that sequence, what I didn't say is, tell me how you do it. I don't actually care how you do it because when a client chooses to work with you, which is the whole point of an engaging and compelling storyline, is for them to say, I'm curious. And that goes back to where we started. I'm curious. But I, what I'm doing is I'm observing your story. I'm listening to whether I get you, whether I want to feel you're credible. And I'm judging. We are human beings judging, saying I'm in the right space. And if I'm not, I'm clearly leaving the room. And when I start to go, I like her. I like what he has to say. His story is really compelling. I like that he's not a stuffed shirt anymore. This is my guy. Guess what happens? They show up and already say, well, I just trust that you know how. You're credible. What I want to know is, are you the right person for me? And the how doesn't come up. So here is my tip to add on to yours is don't focus on the how in your message until you're invited into a conversation that's tell me how. More importantly, it's the story that got you here. So I want to wrap and ask you as our final question. And it's called something I ask all of my guys. It's about amplifying what's working now. So in your own marketing message, in your own growth as a business owner who is a copywriter and storyteller, What's working for you right now in your business to bring you confident, the right leads and movement in your business? So I think the answer to that actually kind of blends with the last point that you made. And, you know, like it's it's how you want to position yourself. So I, you, know, as you saw my key below, I call myself the chief storyteller. And, you know, people say, well, what does that actually mean? I don't want to be too opaque about it. You know, when I say, look, on the ground, it means that I write websites and blogs and newsletters and articles and ebooks and playbooks and the stories that you need told storytellers what sort of gives it that unique bent uh and so you know yes there's a million other content writers out there the way that i do it is through that story narrative and i'm not the only one doing that but it certainly you know helps put things together but building that personal brand building that storytelling brand building that brand is me and being someone who you know like and trust if you really like someone's style and the work that they do you're not afraid to refer them business and you're not afraid to sort of you know say hey this person might be a great fit so you know the business has been built in my case on word of mouth and i'm grateful for it i'm just kind of keeping on with it because building that brand of you know being authentic in my work uh and you know getting the results from clients has just been leading to more work so it's been wonderful I love it. Well, I'm cheering for you. How do people find you if they want to know more about the work that you do and how you might be the resource they are looking for? Sure. I'm a little bit of everywhere. So the website is the right stuff, W R I T E stuff dot agency, not dot com. You can do a dot anything today. So I'm dot agency. Uh, the Instagram is the right stuff agency. Facebook is the right stuff agency. I think I'm technically on TikTok. Uh, email, if you want to get, you know, old fashioned is Sean, S-H-A-U-N, at the right stuff dot agency. I would love to have a chat. I'd love to hear about what you're looking for. And if I am the right fit to help, I'd love to have a further conversation. If not, I will try to find you someone who is. Thank you so much, guys. It has been amazing to have Sean Bernstein as our guest today on Amplify Your Marketing Message. This is really the journey of I've come from the world of law. I've come from the world of journalism. For you to write compelling and engaging copy is how you get your client to move towards you. Moving towards you helps you make more impact and more revenue. We will see you on our next episode. Until then, 
be sure you have the right stuff in your business. We'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you.